So welcome to our 59th meetup uh, today. So uh, welcome uh, Laura and Natalie from uh, uh, Carbono Local uh, Plus for Positive. And uh, today they would like to share their uh, journey about decentralized small-scale carbon farming. Happy to learn what uh, your initiative is about. And uh, yeah, so maybe Laura and Natalie um, give a short introduction and then I give a short view on the next topic and then we dive right into your idea. Thanks so much, uh, Nan. Yeah, um, I will do a brief presentation because we have it in our presentation as well, a more deep presentation. Um, we are Natalie and uh, Laura and Natalie, we are sisters, Colombian sisters eradicated here in, in Germany and happy to, to present you uh, to all of you our project, our project that uh, was born here and uh, the network, actually the network um, project management project two years ago, three years ago. And yeah, happy to share with you our successes and story until now. Yeah, great. My, my name is Laura. <clears throat> yeah, of course, the sister of, of Natalie. And as Kayo said, yeah, Carbono Local was born actually kind of in a mixture as well from, from a workshop with them in this empowering local to do these uh, environmental initiatives on the country. Plus, we got it together with this uh, carbon finance, how, how to make easy or approachable this finance to do, to do these green initiatives. How can we boost them to scale? How can we yeah, like finance carbon farming that it's not really long process, even though it's still uh, long, but kind of, kind of direct. And this is how we, we got to the topic of this uh, in the voluntary carbon market. This kind, this uh, it's only summarizing. It's just this climate finance to for for small scale projects, and that's how we we have been re uh, researching, working, and we came from with a lot of initiatives from from the blockchain, uh, flo yeah, blockchain world, etc. Really well designed systems that are that are helping this. Uh, this market to grow and to be more more transparent, more transparent, more approachable, and that's how that's that's why we are we are here presenting to you. We have several projects as well. We we I don't know. We'll talk maybe later, but we have as well. Like Stefan was saying, uh, okay, he was talking about some carbon farming and plant grazing, and we have as well some uh, several projects in the in the nature based solutions. Uh, sector so we can maybe uh, in the discussion part talk more about it thank you very much and yeah we can maybe the next slide cool uh yeah so a uh, short sneak peek before we dive into uh your um idea so jake our co-organizer will uh share his uh thoughts about the ownerless machines um, so question mark r defy uh transactions contractual agreements so that's a, a topic which uh, you usually yeah, get in contact with when you come to smart contracts and uh, Ethereum and all the other, which supports the standard. Um, yeah, really, really um, interesting to hear more in the next uh, 16th meetup on June 6th. Um, yep, so I uh, would then stop my sharing and I'm sure um, who will share, Laura or Natalie or Christian? Yeah, me. Yep. All right. Then I stop sharing my screen and then we'll go ahead. Um, good afternoon, everyone. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, so today we would like to present you how saying the, the opportunity that we see as carbon credit project developer uh, for local climate solutions in our con in the global south with blockchain so we are um we are exploring this this solution for one of the problems that we have seen uh within the market um and we just wanted to share with you an open discussion so you are from the technology side and um, how do you see also as well uh, this this uh, upcoming upcoming um solutions for carbon credits so welcome everyone and just just we wanted to uh, leave the, the questions for the end and but yeah so keep in mind to to maybe to write it in the chat thank you uh, so we firstly we're gonna uh, give you a brief introduction from us about um you know where we are where are based our background about the voluntary carbon market you not know, to provide you a little bit of context and uh, what it is so important 
uh, the digitalization within the voluntary carbon market and what what uh, has been why has been arising. Uh, some of the blockchain solutions that that we have now assess in the market that is kind of like they're common like well known within the market and um, but it's still in a most of them are already in pilot phase some of the commercialization phase but not yet in a big scale uh, let's say officially um, and yes yeah, so key players that we have identified and some yeah some contact for you to contact us thanks so um yeah so uh, what is Carbono Local Plus? Um, so we are, our mission is to build bridges between the local climate initiatives um, in the global south with carbon finance, cutting edge technology and sustainable business in Europe. So the carbon credits is actually one of the carbon finance way, but we are not in close to that because no, they, this, this, um, this solution is not in a no, forever solution just rather one of the solutions uh, that we could use to finance climate projects. So we are not in close to that. So we are open to different kind of finance uh, opportunities that we can identify here in Europe to bring to our communities. And also um, to bring cutting edge technology that we can also have access here, like blockchain and all these advancements that, uh, advancements that in, in Latin America can, can go a little bit slower to come. Um, yeah, so um, that is the, the origin of our logo. Uh, so we are a German-Colombian environmental consultancy committed to what? To democratize the carbon, the access to carbon markets, to the, um, not to the uh, local projects in, in, in the global south. We are working right now in Latin America, but we are open to work also in Africa and Asia and actually in Europe as well. And even in, in United Kingdom, we have started with um, with our first project uh, in United Kingdom, Feasibility Study on Biochar for Municipal Solid Waste. Um, and we have already supported three uh, plant field uh, capture methane projects in, in, in Turkey. Right now, we are more than four nationalities with our team. So we are based, Laura and I um, are, are fixed, but we have I had this, the happy support of all, all other colleagues as a uh, yeah, so freelancer or support free uh, volunteers that have been supporting the, our projects. And we have more than five years experience within the carbon market. Um, yeah, so uh, a little bit of our background, who we are. Um, I, I come from the natural science and environmental science in Colombia. I did my, my, my the bachelor degree there. And um, I came here to Germany to as a scholarship holder from the AD, the AD, and uh, to complete my you know, to 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 indeed uh, go deeper into the into the nature-based solutions you know, uh, area. And I focus on carbon footprint within the also waste and afolu sector or, or forestry and agriculture sector. Um, and yeah, so the idea is to to bring this this knowledge into the you know, into the our our country where most of them, the opportunities there. Laura come from the engineer, engineering, chemical engineer background in Colombia as well. And she, she did also the master in, in the same university as I, she started uh, first and I, um, she focused on all the renewable energy part. And right now she's also working in the nature of the solution um, area. So we have a good complement, as you can see. Um, to, so we joined forces to create our own consultancy. And we actually was born, we, um, I took one, one project that in the, in the frame of Cajus organization, NGO. Uh, and there we start just playing around uh, what we could do about project management. And that started the idea with Carbono Local. And actually we are very happy that that was, they were, he was our first, first, first supporter. And we are so happy to see in the future uh, some, some benefits and to also to share our experience and support more projects that he's supporting you know, with Net with Bellbyte. So we, before before we from that, we need to be a little bit uh, uh, mature to do that, but uh, we are working on that. Uh, so our services as um, as an organization, so we <clears throat> mainly we are offer consultancy on carbon accounting for carbon certification. So it's only not about um, just the simple consultancy to reduce emissions, but we focus on the 
carbon certification part to, to do all the documentation to do yeah to obtain these issued credits that had a, has a lot of um yeah difficult process let's say have a lot of barriers regarding language um expertise uh, the knowledge of the the process itself um the auditing process so we just break down these these little barriers for our for our communities and we just say we 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 do all of this and you just um, do your part and we provide you the climate finance uh, we focus on mainly three sectors that are not so well renamed and have a lot of uh, a lot of big projects like the forestry sector so we focus on CO2, CO2, uh, methane capture landfills so mainly in the waste sector biogas biochar for municipal landfill and municipal uh, land use uh, municipal uh, residues pardon and um, also from different kind of uh, residues uh, and the, in the other sector, we focus on, on the AFOLU, the forestry sector and regenerative um, a, a livestock, because uh, our family was also a um, livestock family. They, they live the, the process because of the low, low, low yields. But uh, we know and we started as a child uh, knowing that this sector has a lot of um, yeah, opportunities to improve and to say that the local community and that the livestock is not a problem, is how we manage the livestock. So that is why this this come also together. So we we are very happy to to go into this sector that are not so uh, very deep explored. And we are also working with uh, uh, all the most well known international uh, methodologies. Okay, yeah. So a little bit. <clears throat> sorry, we are a bit uh, with you. Uh, so it's about the story of the voluntary carbon markets. As you might imagine, no, like we didn't focus on the basics of blockchain because, of course, you you might know that further more than us. But like we will then share with we'll you what is the voluntary carbon market, a really brief summarize or like a, a really drop uh, in this in the ocean. Okay, so the evolution. Let's start with the evolution of the voluntary carbon market. As I, I was I was telling you, it's a tool. It's a tool that was born. Okay, first, this tool of climate financing was born in, in the Kyoto Protocol, I guess we have heard like in the 19th, 1997 to be, to be exact, is when like the, the protocol of uh, the protocol of Kyoto was written, was agreed, and that's how like the first mechanism, the clean developed mechanism was, was born into, into life, and the, it was kind of the, this regulation of how could it be this exchange of emissions in order to finance the green transition that uh, in the protocol of, protocol of the, the Kyoto Protocol was talking about like kind of mostly the global north to the global south. So it was more Annex 1 country that it was mostly the global north to the uh, Annex uh, Annex 2 or like the other that it was more the global south. So in the beginning, this clean development mechanism developed for the, from the United Nations was to finance these green transitions from the global south. So at that time, it was not really known as well the climate uh, the climate change problem and the challenges. So a few countries, a few industrialized countries, that they were the ones who say like we have more obligation to finance these transitions to a greener transition, was sign up I guess like for two or three countries. So th that's that's why like the voluntary carbon market was born parallel from private initiatives that say like I want even though my country didn't sign up to be legally binding or to be, to be kind of more committed to the, the Kyoto protocol to do to, to the reduction of the greenhouse gases emissions that was born from private initiative that say like we want to we want to be part of the change even though my country officially in the international agreement it's not signing the contract but I as a private institution as a private organization, private, I mean, like not uh, regulated by the government to be NGO, etc. We will kind of do, do, we want to do something. And so in 2004, after kind of all the implementation of the regulation, how could it work? How much money there is? How much uh, money like should be given to the global south, etc. And to which conditions, no? This is kind of all the answers that was, that were like worked in the clean development mechanism in 2004. It's the, the first project with that agreement is done. It was, it, uh, it's in, I'm, I'm not wrong, it was in Nicaragua, coffee, a, coffee, a coffee project financed with this international, international uh, finance. 
So in the 20s, in the 2000s, yeah, in the 20s, I'd say, no, in the, the 2000s, 2000, uh, the, the four main uh, registries, carbon registry are these entities that approve the carbon credits. We will talk more about the carbon credit. Uh, what is that about? So like the first registry where the, the projects could submit, um, yeah, like where they, the, these projects could be registered and get certified in order to obtain a climate finance are born, no? this is the American Carbon Registry, the Climate Action Reserve, the gold standard, and very, very verified carbon standards, also known as as, as BERA, like they are the, the largest uh, carbon credits standards, voluntary carbon credit standard uh, right now. So they are like, they were born like, as, an, as we say, no? like these NGOs were organizing themselves in order to contribute to this climate change. So therefore in the, in the 2015, we talk about the Paris Agreement. It was as well, like really well known. The Paris Agreement now established a framework where it's not only saying like, oh, only the industrialized uh, countries needs to be, needs to contribute to the climate change mitigation rather than now it's everyone should do it, should do everything what they could. No, even the global south is responsible for their emissions, even though they are less. But etc. But it's still not the responsibility for the industrialized countries to contribute more to the mitigation as well to the climate change. So we see like this now. No, now we see the regulation and the Paris Agreement as well. It was born a regulation, a combined regulation that that is regulating the, the voluntary carbon market, or at least leave it, leave it open to every every country regulate through the like above above the voluntary carbon markets. And in Glasgow, we see we see as well that this combination of the uh, mechanism. So then it's not more we we don't talk anymore about the clean development mechanism, but this trans international transaction between countries or between entities. And this is why the voluntary carbon market. Why is voluntary? Because they are not uh, obliged, or they are they don't need to comply with any any rules or any cap and trade system that we have. For example, here this emission trade system where like this certain industry needs to donate, they need to report their emissions and be, uh, be, be below below a certain cap of emissions, no certain threat of emissions. Otherwise, they will have to pay bindingly uh, a tax. In 2021, we see the Web3 initiatives going incorporating the voluntary carbon market because, because the voluntary carbon markets, it's already, you know, has this long, structure difficult um, to understand this uh, lack of transparency is really have dif different issues or have dif different problems. We will see uh, more in, into detail. So the web three comes more, more startups, more initiatives, more private organization using the blockchain initiatives to solve some of the voluntary carbon markets that, it, that was happening in order to to solve the bottlenecks of the voluntary carbon market, and then more projects are in, uh, are developed, and more projects, you know, this the scalability of these uh, green initiatives. So, <laughs> better late than never. What is a voluntary carbon market? So, one, one 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 carbon credit. So, one carbon credit certified carbon credit is equal to one ton of CO two equivalent. Equivalent. What it means equivalent that it could be gas gases, these greenhouse gases emissions. So it could be CO2, could be methane, could be a, a, a nitrous oxide. But this, the, the, common, the common point will be CO2. So it's one ton of CO2 equivalent reduced or removed from the atmosphere. So it's an intangible asset. So it's, it's after, after approved, that's, that's what it means, one carbon credit, is equal one ton of CO2 equivalent reduced or removed from, from the atmosphere. So here we wanted to share, we wanted to share with you. This is based on, on, on the open forest protocol as well. So I like for carbon credits. So how does it start? Is the project design, uh, the project design start now, for example, carbon card that we are as well some project developers. So we develop the idea, we plan, we for example, or a forestry project, a renewable energy project, a carbon framing, a plant grazing uh, project, for example. So we have we, we, we write about it and we present it to the standards of our choice. Of our choice, if it's the national, some international, 
we will see. But what, what happened to that, there's a limit market access to, for example, upfront, uh, upfront capital, no? Like there's no way that, for example, a, a company will have to kind of finance us as project developers since the beginning in order to, to improve this, um, um, this challenge, no? The challenge of developing a project, the registration, the registration of a project, what is the problem, for example, of a, a registration of the problem? decoupled and our distributed record. So we don't have like a steel, no yet, but like every registry, every standard has their own, their own uh, registry or their own projects. And so you will have to check individually. It's actually the, the second live part of the live of credits, project design, registration, monitoring, reporting, and verification. So these projects needs to be monitored and reported the missions that they are actually removing, uh, yeah, removing or avoiding to emit into the into the atmosphere. So what, for example, what in this case, what is the challenge? There's limited transparency around this process. So it's, for example, let's say to suit, they, they, they validate the process, but it's really between the project developer and this validation company, but it's not really publicly available what they, they, they decide. You just, you just see a kind of a, the final report, but it's not a publicly validated uh, process. So we have the issuance where they where they where the carbon standards already validated that the projects are real, are additional, are exactly that the, the, the calculations were really, really done. And there comes an issues, the, the issuance, no, they, they obtain the publicly, they um, they allocate the, the carbon credits that belongs to that project. And as well, there's distributed records about there's no um yeah, sometimes you no know, the quality, the prices. Etc. More details, and then they are kind of all distributed between all the all the carbon carbon um, standards. There's a transaction, the transaction of the comes the transaction of the carbon credit where the money is generated. And the transaction could be between the should be between, for example, the project developer and to the final client. The final client is the final client that wants to do this environmental claim that say like, oh, I emit this amount of greenhouse gas emissions, I want to compensate. I want to, of course, they should, they, they have to reduce first, for example, but they say like, okay, give them the unavoidable emissions that I am emitting, this final client, the private final client says like, I will buy some carbon credits to be, to reach this net, net zero target of my company, even my country, if it's, we are talking about two countries, for example, and here, what as well is like, what is the challenge? Um, there's a mistrust of credit quality. How can I compare these carbon credits, the quality? And there's a lack of efficient price discovery. So a client should you, doesn't sometimes doesn't know what what to pay, and the project developers as well they are paying for a lot of intermediates to reach this final this final climate uh, the final uh, climate uh, client. And finally, the retirement of the carbon credit. The retirement is like the project obtains carbon credits because the CO2 was already removed and it's approved. And um, then the retirement is when a company says, like, okay, I compensate my footprint um, emission and yeah, my footprint from, from my work. And these are like the, the retirement of the carbon credit. So it could be compensated. So the, the kind of the carbon credits are canceled and it cannot be like further for their be used, no, like a double claiming. So it's uh, the carbon credit should be already. Nata, back, back to you. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> okay, uh, so right now we wanted to give you a really brief overview because having a look at the time. Um, so to explain you a little bit about the carbon standards, so what is the importance of this, uh, what carbon standards are looking um, for to increase transparency through carbon, through blockchain as well. So could you please? So uh, mainly here we have uh, independent standards approved by CROI. CROI is an international <clears throat> uh, organization for, for, um, for compensation and reduction of, of um, offsets um, aliens. So we have here uh, the verified carbon standard on the left, on the, the red part and the green part. So we have which types of sector, we have renewable uh, energies, AFOLU, forestry, agriculture. So basically it's worldwide, we have gold standards, the second one, 
And um, another one is Plan Vivo, but we have a lot of more um, carbon standards that are I endorse by a cross. So, so that is the term that is that is um, used for high quality carbon standards. And we have a, um, a list. These are the um, one of the most important in the in this sector, but the, and that the ones that we would like to work with. And the other ones, uh, for example, the in the case in Colombia, we have also national carbon standards that are based on or very similar to these international standards and that also with the aim to, to provide carbon credits in the national con um, government or a compliance system, because Colombia has a very positive and very um, advanced developed um, process of, of linking compliance market, voluntary uh, compliance market. So the, 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 the high emitting companies can offset the, um, their emissions with some national and voluntary carbon credits from from vera from very high carbon standard or from gold standard so um so that is to 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 provide you at this a brief, a brief overview about um, the more most important carbon standards so we have verified carbon standards and gold standard are the two most important <clears throat> so um i just we want to provide you them um, a little bit of traction what happened with this Yes, no um, blockchain. So, for example, where no, we present use the, best, the most important. So, at the beginning, and they will say, wait, we don't know. Um, in, back into 2021, as Laura presented. So, they say, well, no, we don't know what you're talking about. So, just um, one company, um, Tukan, did this proposal and they just took, canceled some credits from the registry of Vera. Uh, but, very, very, so all projects are very high and low quality. So, this company didn't know that that Vera has different quality projects because you know of this development of the current market. So the, the very old ones are very have very low quality for because at, at that point we they you know the market wasn't uh, so developed in this regard. Uh, so we just in this point and they they cancel a lot of credits, a lot of current credits we're gonna present. And then um so we have here it's it's, it's on the uh, on the on the yeah, the, the next one was in 2022 in May, and they they not just they saw what they wanted to do because they wanted to 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 further uh, sell it into another companies. So they prohibited, they banned um, all the carbon credit tokenization at all. So um, this company lost a lot of um, money, uh, but they didn't know, and that Vera just no didn't know what to do uh, but a lot of you no know, due to the a lot of pressure because of the media and a lot of the companies say no this blockchain it's uh, we need to to you know we need to uh, approach this topic because blockchain is not only tokenization but you need to solve this that that provides transparency so in the they they um start a consultation uh, to you not know, to say okay how we do this tokenization because this this these standards are kind of like an old school, so they have a lot of um, very in an old way, all, all the modish, um, all the process documentation. They have a registry, but all the process is very slow uh, for the carbon certification. The auditing is a very very complicated process. There is no standardized or um, way of to follow to monitor the project. So. Um, so the the no at the end so now Laura is the last one uh, the, the the point is the conclusion is that Vera has now um, the result of the public consultancy phase for the um, tokenization of the Vera the verified carbon standard credits so right now it's in a, like a, they are evaluating what to do how to link the blockchain companies with um, the carbon credits so right now at that point. We are working with Vera with these verified carbon standards, and um, so we're gonna try to 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 wait. No, we're gonna wait actually until Vera has decided the final decision because um, this you can see you can see in the web page of, of the verified carbon standard is a huge document where a lot of blockchain companies has um, have presented the, the the offer the proposal how to do these linkages between the credits and the blockchain. Um, so yeah, so the idea is um, to provide also the gold standard. Gold standard is the second largest the st carbon standard um, certification. So they are more open, and they even started to to analyze this a blockchain for monitoring, reporting purposes, activities, and they have these different um, reports that you can also have a look at the web page gold standard. 
Um, and then uh, you can see that, oh, that they have a lot of you know, views on how blockchain works, but in the part of tokenization of carbon credits, they are working on, and also they have a um, consultancy group, and you can have also, can review the companies that participated there and how to approach the topics of carbon credits. So this tokenization is a really, um, right now it's a really high topic and there is in the no definition phase, but they have no, they have survived these two years of critics and to say, no, we need this tokenization and how to bring it and because they, the standards wanted to ban blockchain uh, tokenization of credits. Yeah, and um, just, just to complement as well, like this uh, debate as well was, was intended or well was kind of yeah a challenge for them because of the the environmental footprint of the blockchain itself no as you might know no there's different i don't know like bitcoin or like other other standards okay. and yeah proof of stake proof of um what is the other <laughs> proof of work so proof of work or proof, proof of, of stake work, exactly like the, the yeah. so how could be like that environmental projects are linked to a really high intensive uh, blockchains, for example, uh, technology. So, but we will see like not the evolutions of this technology and they are really less intensive, but that was the debate until they understood that there were different ways to tokenize this uh, current credits. So as well, it was a huge debate between this environmental uh, world and the climate projects could kind of work with a lot of like high emitting technologies. And this, this capacity, and this capacity building were, were, was done by the by the blockchain company because they wanted to they need to explain that the energy you not know, the differentiation of the differentiation of blockchain so that we didn't know nobody of the voluntary car market knew it and they started to this capacity building about blockchain the different you know, of them the base the blockchain based and the, the difference of all of about blockchain so that is why we came into the to understand of more um but yeah, right now it's not yet implemented the uh, official. Um, also, the IETA, the International Mission Trading Association, that's so that is kind of like a, the the official, the most important organization when regarding to trading of these the carbon credits. And even they talk about on-chain credits, that is blockchain um, credits and off-chain credits. So the off-chain are, uh, let's say, the traditional ones. So they wanted to, to work on on-chain credits and how to, to provide guidelines to because the companies were, the blockchain companies were just really uh, tokenizing credits and just doing it because of they want to and developing really huge crazy ideas. So all these, these stakeholders needed to, okay, stop, stop, stop. We need to put some rules to these companies because they are super fast and they develop the crazy, most wonderful projects with carbon credits. Mm, and uh, they really, they are you not, know, they are um, developing really, really nice uh, proposals, but regarding of the implementation, it's kind of challenging um, what it comes. Um, so yet has presented some principles about uh, the importance of this trading between carbon credits and, and off-chain credits and the, to convert it into tokens and to on-chain to get uh, credits. Um, so the idea is that to provide registry, authorities, IT security, I want to say, so carbon tokens from credible standards, so they cannot take any not credible standards that is not uh, from ICROA, what I presented before, and um, transparency, know your customers, uh, low carbon footprints, that is also a point, IT security, registry transparency, claims only for burn tokens and, and retired credits. Um, yeah, so that is what, because the company that just took these credits at the beginning to can didn't know that if they take uh, the credits from the register of Verat of the verified carbon standard, it's actually not valid. I mean, it's like they burned, they burned the beneficial environmental benefits, so they actually, it's, they do not work anymore. Uh, so they didn't know that. Um, so about this claiming on how, where I should uh, claim the, the beneficial uh, benefit for my company or not. Uh, yeah, so next one. And they also the in, in this in this process, not only the, the the blockchain companies were doing something, but the World Bank itself was developing already from 2022. So they 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 saw this opportunity for for blockchain, and they are developing right now climate where uh, sorry half a second. 
um, climate warehouse where wanted to join us. You can see here jurisdictional registries, that is all the country's new registries, PCM registries, so that is voluntary carbon registries, uh, marketplaces, um, and the Paris Agreement mechanism is all about trading between countries. So we can have trading between companies, trading between uh, uh, countries, uh, marketplaces. Um, so, you know, they want to, uh, this is a big, big war, but- we All at one, all at one place. All at one. And they will, it, it, so that is, so what they mentioned is that they want to have a really, really huge blockchain uh, warehouse where all these registries, Carbo Gold Standard, uh, Vera, Plan Vivo, so you can have, you can go as a country, as a con company and to see, to put your credit there and you can just track all the carbon credits. It doesn't matter which blockchain or which registry, you can just have this um, traction of the, um, of the credit. So you can see what, what a huge change would be if you can just go there and to see your credit, but we have, we, we have now, uh, we don't have that uh, now, so that is on transparency um, of the of the market. Yeah, and also the UNFCCC, uh, uh, the United Nations Framework <coughs> Convention on Climate Change, and that is the leading uh, you know, a part to to also to develop methodologies all about um, yeah so climate change mitigation activities uh, projects and to just to bring to develop all this uh, research work about climate change. Um, so they're also working on that. Uh, so we are happy to see that no, there is not a, a super weird topic. Uh, it's about really incorporated by important, very important institutions. And um, so they are really you not know, they're in this pilot phase in how to 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 bring this together because they want they they actually the the, the summary is that they they identify that it's a really huge opportunity to increase transparency, to bring all uh, the information together or projects, but um, to do it well in a one centralized um, information source. I continue to want to jump. Yeah, great, great. Thank you. Now we will talk about like the blockchain solution supporting the voluntary carbon market. And we will move to to a more practical examples. Now they are well well known. Uh, how does tokenization work? We will not really get into details. We will leave really the, uh, uh, the technical details, I guess, uh, to you, but I will understand how does it work. This is a tokenization, but this is actually a two-way two two bridge tokenization. As Natalie was mentioned, tokenization is the digitalization using this uh, blockchain technology of the carbon credits. So it's like the traceability of Who's the project developer, etc., until the the amounts that can be traceable, no? For how many times these carbon credits is is going to be sold, uh, or the smart contracts that are, are embedded into that that carbon credits. And the two bridge way, it's like uh, maybe you you don't know, but the carbon credits usually happens between a, a like paper contract, let's say with the project developer or intermediary, a lot of intermediaries that. Be between the project developers or the local community benefiting until the, the, the final user, or the final buyer, there's a lot of people kind of making profit of this huge gap that there's between the two of them. So like the two bridge, put, so like the normal carbon credits uh, so selling contract, it's like a yeah digital contract where they say like uh, how many credits do they have, how many credits that they want to sell. So it's a really over the counter and like uh, over the counter uh, transactions. So now the, the tokenization and the bridging, the two way bridge, uh, what, what it's going to do, no? They want to bring up some, uh, to bring the, the carbon credits into a, a digitalized registry where the carbon credits are tokenized and can be sell, even can be selling less than one ton. We will see like there's a really as well, this controversial, but these two bridges, like for example, as Carbono Local, we decided to go, for example, in this case, uh, for example, with Talo, they 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 are uh, uh, they are having closing some deals. They close some deals with Gold Standard to digitalize or yeah to present some of the carbon credits that Gold Standard approved that the project developers that want to work with Gold Standard could as well digitalize the credits through this uh, Talo to the Talo registry. 
And I, I could say, okay, Carlo, uh, Carlo, for example, this, to this blockchain technology, I digitalized, I did tokenize, tokenize my carbon credits, and you can sell them on chain, no? to, to can say through that registry. But however, if I found a client that is a really over the counter client that I did it like from work, from networking, I could retrieve the, this carbon credits, I could take it back from this tokenized world can put it off chain. No, it's, they were on chain, but I can put it back to off chain to this really uh, paper contract and sell it back. Because it, in the beginning was like, I digitalized my tokenized and they are tokenized and I have to sell other credits, but they are the, the on chain credits still are kind of a stock on this on chain registry. But now this two bridge allows me to, to make it on chain or off chain uh, really easily that's kind of facilitated as well that there are these other standards kind of have now a positive or like from the project developers that it's my carbon credits are not lost but i can like kind of up, update them up yeah to to up them to update them to the to the registries um yes pros and cons of course like the the pros is like the decentralization of that how we monitor our projects could be digitalized. How are the traceability of this verification process? It's not anymore like one player, but could be several players verifying one, uh, one only project. It's only on-chain cannot be changeable. So like it's all really transparent, et cetera. No? This transparency, traceability of selling, how much does it cost? How much, how many times my carbon credits has been sold? And I don't know. Etc. But of course, the cont the contrast is this is still an ongoing project. The legal status of the of this uh, crypto um, tokenization, and like the, the the using of that of this technology, this carbon carbon project, the complexity. You no, know, it's another additional complexity, so to say. Even though in the future it could be more easy, that could be more. Uh, it facilitate you know, all these processes that are doing like per hand or really that could be replaced by technology and algorithms, but this additional complexity, the language, no? because we, we are working, for example, with local communities, not in additional, that they have to like kind of um, capacitate themselves into tokenize as the voluntary carbon market is as well, really uh, like complex itself. So do we see these uh, pros and cons? Here, uh, a token, for example, here we brought uh, from from Moss. That it was a project developer in in Brazil. Not token, of course, it's not a digital coin, and they they structured with uh, some uh, smart contracts where, like, kind of the, these countries of project developers are starting to uh, to use tokenized con um, yeah tokens, so to say, one credit for equality as well. It must be equally to uh, one ton of of CO two removed. In this case, for example, for a forestry, from a forestry uh, project. So there's a platform that already sell the the, the carbon credits as tokens, no, as tokens from with the with the brand of the these uh, project developers and to be sell as well um, online. So this is an example of the already tokenization of carbon credits. Non fungible tokens. For example, this is another. It's not something. It could be linked to the voluntary carbon credits, but could be linked. Uh, it could be like a parallel uh, of that. The non fungible tokens. For example, we see this example as well from Moss, but there's a lot of other examples where you cannot. You you don't have to follow this uh, voluntary carbon methodology that they are really long. I have to present this project description document and how to monitor the forest all the calculations that you have to do. For example, an example of the NFTs, non-fungible tokens in this, uh, in the Brazilian Amazon, it's like to say like, okay, we kind of digitalize the land or the forest, the forest um, part of the, the, the part of the hectares, how many hectares, etc. I say like, okay, I divided that hectares into each, for example, each uh, 50 hectares as well. And I, I would give each uh, 50 uh, hectares a token. Or, or like NFT, NFT, and people could buy these NFTs, these non-fungible tokens, by protecting this minimum amount of forest. So it's not anymore like 
how many CO2 are they decreasing as part of the methodologies, how many biodiversity, but it's like, you know, you're protecting this amount of hectares and they receive some videos of animals, biodiversity, and they don't have to go through, for example, this long process of certification with a carbon standards that takes sometimes two years, even between two years and five years of certification. Imagine the cost for local communities, but for example, these non-fungible tokens is as well some, uh, some proof or, of blockchain uh, technology into the digitalization of, of assets or like improving the environmental, supporting environmental projects. Okay, the, the state of the digital carbon market here, they, they are based on the Kima DAO. So we, we, we see here on the, on, the, on the left, on the left, yeah. Are you, uh, for example, retired off chain credits. For example, they took a here, here the Vera registry, you know, it's more than 1 billion uh, carbon credits already issued. As we mentioned, Vera is the largest, the largest uh, issuer of carbon credits uh, the, as carbon standard. So we have, almost half of it retired of chain credit. It means that they were already canceled. They accomplished their missions, that it was people are compensated their CO2 uh, with that. So they are not bankable assets. No, people shouldn't take this carbon credit. I, I, I buy carbon credit and I take it and I wait just that the, the value increased and I sell it again. No, the carbon credits are really this climate finance mechanism. So you compensate and you, that, at the same time, it's improving these local communities to develop more, uh, more projects of that. Of that, we, we see that are around uh, six six hundred thousand are tokenized, tokenized and retired. I oh, know, sorry, yeah, five five uh, twenty five millions are tokenized. So it means that they are on chain of that of those issued credits. No, they are not being retired as well and. Six, almost uh, six, uh, 600,000 are tokenized, are on chain credit, and they were retired. So they were already, as not as a board, delete, someone already, a company, a country already make this uh, climate claim, and they are climate neutral or, or the footprint partly, it's already been compensated with, uh, with, uh, with carbon credits, on chain or off chain, but in this case was uh, um, on chain. So you could see like the, the sizes of the market and it has been increasing. We didn't do the comparison, but it's like the, the numbers are much bigger than, for example, last year. And here as well, the in the Klima DAO, Klima DAO, that you can follow the link, uh, the breakdown of total digital carbon supply blockchain per platform. So we say, now we see that almost uh, 80, 86 percent is using Polygon, other 12 percent that is in Ethereum, and other are using Celo or Celo. So now that you are like the, the fans of the technology, but these are kind of the more blockchain platforms uh, that they are being used in the, in the digital carbon market. The key players, here's a, a really nice well, screenshot or for, from the Puro Earth. Puro Earth, they, these key players of the voluntary carbon market. This is the section of the tokenized carbon credits. We didn't divide it, but here are collectives from tokenization supporting carbon credits registries, marketplaces, uh, blockchain powered carbon exchanges, and the people, for example, like at Talo, that we were talking about this bridging carbon credits on chain, these two ways of, of that. So here's like, if you want to research more, like all, the, all of these companies that you can find out more, how do they work, how they support this um, finance of, of, carbon, of carbon farming, carbon, carbon projects. It's an all, all, about, all around the world. Well, yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah no, so something. before before finishing to complement that, um, also the, the main the main problems uh, of the voluntary carbon market is also the, the generation of high quality projects, as Laura mentioned before. And um this this kind of like this the, the, the throwback of um of the blockchain community because they are not solving the problems of, of the voluntary carbon regarding um, no offer of credit. So they are bringing kind of like a more complexity in, in the discussion and um, you know, the, the part of creation of more credits, more automatized, more like accessible to finance is not being covered yet that some of these companies are trying to, 
to, to solve, uh, but not some of them. They are actually working with credits already issued. The most problems that we have as project developers is that to reach this, this carbon credit is a really huge mountain to reach finance, to do the certification, to pay our work, because uh, we need, we get the money when we have the credit and it can be one, two, three, four, five years until you get the credits because of the slow process of monitoring, reporting, because of the high, um, not complicated documentation uh, regarding the certification. So that we what we are right now with Laura and um, doing the certification of um, the next uh, grazing or no? regenerative grazing um, project in Colombia. It will be the first one and we are supporting them uh, and we are financing actually ourselves uh, with our own work. And now we have started uh, our fin uh, the, um, the finance uh, round, the investment round. Um, and because of that, because, um, and we have this, no, you know, this, this um, struggle to just to keep, how to to bring this money into the project before um, the carbon credits are issued so um yeah so that is kind of like where we are right now we we didn't present actually the our projects uh, for to to stefan to do more exchange um but actually we we could we could talk uh, more about it because uh what we are working on because of that, uh, exactly in this um rotational grazing projects in Colombia and it's very enriching this topic. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Thanks uh, a lot. Really interesting. Thanks. So yes, uh, questions to uh, Natalie and Laura. I think it's a complex field and industry and area. A lot of words uh, new to people who are not into carbon uh, credits and carbon markets. Any uh, challenging questions or ideas, feedback for Natalie, Laura? Well, the one thing I could say, it's really complicated what you, I, I think I, I just missed out a lot of things and uh, there are a lot of questions running around how this market really, really works. I mean, what I understood the one, uh, I don't know from, from uh, what you said, but the one thing is uh, in this market, the verification or certification of the uh, real removal of, of uh, carbon out of the atmosphere. And this is um, a problem in itself as, as it's an intangible product in a, in a way, or it's very diff difficult to monitor. And the one question I have in my head is who is really issuing the carbon credits? Because there should be a certain maximum amount of carbon credits that uh, the country or the world has uh, has um, to to use, and I'm not so. This was I don't know. Basically, a question: Who is issuing this this one? Because this becomes to be some kind of money, and in the end, of, I have the feeling that's a big uh, area where where a lot of money is is uh, meandering around, and it's not so really clear what's happening happening there. But I don't know if it's there's a question. That he could answer or clarify, or if I just didn't understand a lot of things that you talked about, um, it was a lot for me. <laughs> Thanks, Jan. Um, regarding your your first question about uh, this this process, so actually these carbon credits, I mean the methodologies are there, and there is a well recognized process to measure the, for example, the the removals. Uh, there's a critics about the red projects about the avoidance projects that is another topic um but about the how to calculate the organic soil carbon organic soil gain in the soil uh, how to calculate the emissions from the livestock how to calculate the emissions from the from a tree those are super well a uh, very well written technology methodologies so all these processes are very as kind of like a super dispendious and long and to do this carbon certificate, to the documentation, the calculations, the supporting documentation, and all this process takes too long. That is so that the process is well done, but uh, in a really old fashioned way. So we have to do this super very complex and all way uh, auditing process, very paper and the supporting documentation. So it's not well automatized. So that is why it taking took so much time, but the methodologies itself are very high quality. Mm -hmm. So that is why it's still so you, we can account that we are really supporting a carbon removal in the other in some 
some place in the in the world. Um, but yeah, so that is uh, our perspective that uh, it needs to be more automatized and to bring this automatization in more frackable way uh, through maybe blockchain or something. And yeah, and actually one like one uh, kind of a positive way of this blockchain technology is as well like the development of the, the, the methodologies itself. So we have, they are coming from the IPCC, this intergovernmental panel of climate change, so they are developing all this methodology of proof and like Vera and all the standards are the ones that issue it and they have their norms, it has to be real, additional, third party verified. So all these kind of requirements that a carbon credit should be done, for example, that the distribution go to the local parties and as well like these methodologies now, because now we have the uh, satellite data, uh, data and we have these different technologies that, that the, the carbon standards are going slowly so that the blockchain or the digitalization market could could as well improve the development of different methodologies of different technologies from, etc. different technologies that are coming to the market right now. And that could be facilitate as well the incorporation between these, uh, the current markets and to well, what you say, like remote transparency that you could follow up all the process in a project. So you, can, you see that they are like really verify all these emissions. Verifiable. And just to finish out uh, your, your point about where the money is going to, so that is exactly another in transparency in the market because when you you buy the you no know, you 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 just you finance with the carbon credit mm -hmm. and you say why well, I want to support this project but you actually you don't know how much of these fifteen euros it's coming back into the project so that That's is why nice. this uh, right now there is a, a new high qual higher quality criteria for carbon credits and it is this carbon its name of a revenue share a revenue share mechanism so the companies need to start in the future to say what how much it's coming back into the the communities so, because you know 10 20 percent one percent what is the profit going mm -hmm. uh, so that is what um, the most i mean from my our perspective is this the traction the price transparency because we as project developers we see that you no know, we negotiate with with the big fishes and they wanted to take all the profit so what we are working is in okay no we need to this bring this we need that it is published how much money are we taking as carbon local because in the grassland for example grassland project we are transparently offering 65 percent of the profit to the communities and this 65 percent that means that at least not 35 percent it's 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 between us for our work about all this difficult work and um, but that is transparency because at least no we, we were not working with blockchain but at least we wanted to to put in words um, and there is an this plan it's only one carbon standard that is saying that at least 60 percent of the profit needs to go back to the communities to be high quality and community-based Standard. So that is, um, we are applying this principle uh, within the grassland uh, project in Colombia. Uh, so to show that a company can show, but uh, no, no, so many companies could do this this um, claim of how many profit is going back. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Natalie. I think uh, Stefan and then Ronald, uh, you raised your hand. Questions. Yes, uh, I mentioned before um, we, are, we are investing into uh, rotational grazing. Uh, especially in the South American market, uh, like uh, Argentina. And uh, the idea is uh, um, to have uh, like a tracked uh, animal uh, that is really walking around that we can prove um, that they are really outside uh, walking around and, and they are uh, sitting on a soil of uh, uh, square meters. And then we can see, see, okay, when they are moving around like this and staying on this patch of grass, then uh, it uh, invests uh, or gets some uh, cell soil sequestration. And, um, and to, to the point uh, that we are making is uh, here, uh, how can we transfer this from, uh, uh, from, uh, from uh, um, probing? So at the moment they're doing probes. Uh, so every hectare they need to, to take 10 probes uh, every month. Uh, and that's quite expensive. And uh, the idea was to take it away and put it on the animals because they uh, do crazy. They eat uh, a lot of grass. And when they do that, um, um, they, um, um, they, they get the grass to crawl and the carbon is being invested into the soil. It's a called, uh, called soil sequestration. And uh, we have not found a way now how we can uh, mint this as a, um, as a carbon dioxide uh, um, credit. 
Is, is that something you are investing uh, as well? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That is why uh, the project in Colombia is about. So to just to make sure we support because there is, I don't know if you're, you, it is a, already a carbon project. No. No, no. Okay, At the moment, it's is... more about uh, the tracking. And uh, um, we also want to support farmers that have uh, outside grazing animals with a, le a leasing platform. So it's a, uh, at the moment more a DeFi uh, approach. Um, and we're doing uh, uh, cow leasing in Germany already in a conventional way. It's, it sounds uh, um, funny, but it's, it's working capital nonetheless. It's like having a car machinery or something. So the production of machinery and, and, the, and the farmer want to, to improve husbandry so they need to invest in the stables. And so uh, we said, OK, we need to invest also. And, and this would be one thing to show. Uh, and, and then we can lease these animals. So that's also the first thing that we want to do in South America. But in addition, which is a much more attractive thing, to give them a bonus. And um, when they are being tracked, um, so they get an additional uh, carbon uh, um, credit. Exactly that. That is, we could we could exchange maybe in another meeting more deeply because that is why we are helping the the the, the ranchers there, not to all this investment to make sure we did the carbon certification. We are bringing them monitoring um, activities, for example, with an additional app uh, to monitor remotely uh, the carbon, and we are we are gonna do a plan a sample plan to do the measures on the soil, but. The, not to do it in a forecasting way, so there is no every time to the need to measure the carbon, the soil organic carbon. So we are working also with a, a company who is supporting us in that. But it is to to take that. I mean, that is what they are doing the carbon certification. So just to say how you can Stefan measure the impact for uh, benefits of your of your grasslands farmers. So they they say they describe the process, the the methodologies, the formulas. The, the documentation you need to fill to get access to this climate farming is what we are focus, focusing on. That's amazing. It's really cool. Um, but we should have another talk uh, on this. Um, it's all yeah, and, yeah, sorry, yeah. no, sorry to interrupt, but uh, what you were saying, the challenge is this. Now we have, of course, for example, in Colombia, we have these, I don't know, 2,000 hectares ranchers, but we have as well these two hectares rancheries. And they are kind of like the most of them, no? 90% of these small two to 10, to even 200 hectares that it, they are not economically feasible. But if we are all together, we can be like a carbon project to, to, to afford this carbon certification. And that's why as well, like this remote sensing, blockchain, decentralized solutions help to monitor, no? Because you take some samples, but you could do as well some using some uh, artificial intelligence technology, remote sensing technology, you could, like with remote sensing, this uh, satellite uh, data imaginary, you could say, ah, the carbon is being stored and you can as well like this, do some drones to say, to prove, but to trust now that they, the cows are outside, like because you see the process, you can visit the farms. So now that this digitalization of how you show, how you improve these videos that people got into to the local farmers that they can really each have a profile that you can verify like the, the, the solid organic carbon increase in each farm. So this is kind of the, the digitalization that, that works along of the, the chain and the social benefits of the community. Now we took a lot about the carbon, but it's the social benefits and their transparency and yeah, to, 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 to do this kind of, to improve this verification, trustable world. Uh, to make it, yeah, so place. more fast. And more, more easy and fast, exactly. Yeah. Not, not, it's not like we have to wait 10 years until we develop, we write this huge uh, document that could be yeah, easily and uh, uh, well financed and well transparent. And that maybe that it's not a lot of intermediates as a standard validator, but maybe just one to one with the project developer in the future when there's more trust on the process and each investor is involved more in each project. Amazing, thanks. Ronald? Yeah, well, I think you you answered basically a few of the questions already. So I, I was basically in just doing a recap for myself, because in the end, what the question I'm, I have is always, so why do we have to do this on blockchain? So what's what's the, the specific um, quality which blockchain brings in? And what I understood is basically what, what you 
currently also explained. In my view, it's uh, on the transparency side. So making the whole process much more transparent than any other of these uh, mechanisms. The other thing then is obviously to drive the costs down along this the value chain and make it more accessible also to smaller players, like you just explained, the two hectare ones and not the thousand hectare ones. But what was what was also interesting to me that, that you said that there is a, basically still a struggle on financing um, such projects, because what you see in other areas like financing um, software development or so, there are already platforms in place like Gitcoin, where you can create, where you can pitch basically your project and um, ask community and, and, and donors basically to finance uh, that effort. So I don't know if you already explored in that direction, because, uh, but I think that could be a useful also link from the token side again into uh, into the, the starting of the process and or, or to uh, in the in in making this a more cyclic approach so i think that could be something uh, and the, the the last idea which i had is on on the selling side of uh, so on on finding uh, the people who buy these certificates so um what i was a bit disturbed or what what i find disturbing is this the the the, the different the many different approaches which are in the market obviously and so is there any any platform again or any aggregator who puts all these different um, uh, approaches together and makes and have have a transparent process to sell it to the people who want to offset uh, their their carbon emissions. So, yeah, sorry for being a bit all over the place, but uh, these are were the ideas which I uh, had during your very informative and, and detailed presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Ronald, for the great overview. And um, yeah, regarding that, your last part about the selling carbon credits, if we have it today, our credits, we could have buyers. We have already offers about buyers. If we have today, tomorrow, the carbon credit, okay, yeah. But to take the risk between, not the investment, to take credit between we are working on and until we get the results, it's the riskiest part of the carbon credit um, development. Uh, so there is no you need to take, um, when a company invests in that, uh, sponsors, it's a lot of work and we are only two, so we are, we have to, to, co to concentrate either on developing the project or just looking for the finance, but we couldn't do the um, both. So we just, okay, uh, just work with the fingers we say, and let's build the, the project. And um, we are we are in a, in a, some platforms for, for to raise finance, but we face this, this also these barriers that they wanted to take um, we huge profit and um, we are not so finance girls. That is why one we met to get this also the support and the local projects because we are kind of like small but now we are getting bigger um on this 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 share profit revenue and um this not is just to follow to make it that the thing simpler yeah so uh, we haven't no we just pitches at the beginning but right now we um, we are looking for the investors the initial investor we have already some offers um but yeah so it's kind of like um no, we would like to 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 have a pilot and automatization to bring pilot a blockchain in the monitoring part. Yeah, and <clears throat> to answer, for example, the first comment as well, complement it was around like why blockchain and it, for example, now these carbon markets are already complex and they need to a lot of procedures to fulfill to the carbon standards. But for example, we didn't talk because it was a huge ocean that we have to we had to select the topic. But for example, the open forest protocol, they are they, they are these IT uh, companies that like with this remote sensing and they are validating projects without. So they are developing their own standard that could be validated not for just one institution but like for ten institution at the same time, and they they don't have to go to bear out to these carbon standards, but people that like they prove and that they all this traceability that people could trust, oh, they are doing the good job. 
I will buy my carbon credits or like the tokenized, uh, could be in NFTs or tokens or the, these emissions that they are proved, the technology they proved that they were removed and the people go to them and say, like, I will buy some open forest protocol credits. So no, so it's, it's a different, it's not only about the carbon credits, but it's all other technology verification companies that could be like kind of open the market, more registries, no, like not only the, the, the few that for or the standards, but could be now thousand registries that we can have already more, more carbon projects and not to wait because of course, Vera, for example, takes between five months to answer to a project, for example, to be already verified, etc. So that's kind of this, this bottleneck time that is like, we, we don't have time to waste. So that will be like the blockchain or technologies to yeah, accelerate. I think Kayo has also a question. Yeah, maybe maybe I didn't get it um, in your presentation. Thank you, very nice presentation, but um, very complex. And and I was wondering, but maybe you've said it. What the 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 tokenized carbon credits? Where are they um, traded? Where is the marketplace for this? Is this the same as the? Is this a regulated marketplace, or is it? How how are they traded? Yeah, exactly. These companies develop this own marketplace and and to to have the the tokenized carbon credit in their platform, for example, Tucan. And the the point is that they own you not know, their own blockchain company has their own marketplace, so it becomes like a really disorganized. So we don't know the the registries that they don't know where the the credit went. So that is why the challenge to do this climate, what is the World Bank you doing? Try to, to unite, to, to say, okay, please all of the blockchain guys need to register here. But it's another another marketplace, yeah. yeah exactly. Why is it? A... No, for example, yeah, sorry. No, this is for example, the Air Carbon Exchange, they use tokenized credits to sell them. So like, uh, as well, so not Thalo, as we were talking, Thalo is as well some, some, some marketplace and, and registry and like financing of projects that want to sell, sell, sell carbon credits. So it's different. We didn't divide it here, but like each sometime they, they are here as well, some, uh, some registries. I don't know, yeah, Tucan as well, but over the Klimadao platform. So there are different offset, for example, not low carbon. They're all used, this is on-chain carbon credit to sell it, but it's as well decentralized. So you, you choose either air carbon or climate DAO or offset or you just as project developer we can have i don't know part of our portfolio here part of our portfolio of carbon credits here over there but yeah there's no this like a climate warehouse that is kind of uh, and, although and, the world bank is not for transaction for sale. yeah and the world bank is trying to put this all in in one place to, to but only the information only the information not not to, not the not transactions. the transact not the transactions but all the information that you say like I could look any carbon credit from the gold standard bearer, et cetera, but not for the transaction, but just like the one thing. huge registry. Mm. It's in which blockchain it is, in which carbon plays, which market, which token, token, et cetera. So, but, so that example, is why we yeah. are saying that, that this brings, um, not trying to solve this transparency, but so many actors that bring a new, more complex uh, voluntary carbon market into the, yeah, this scene. And how is it, you know, I mean, I remember when we, we talked about this, that not everybody can buy, a, well, if, if, if I would, have, would want to buy a carbon credit, yeah, you know, like a, a certificate, a carbon credit, uh, I would have to register with this um, um, marketplace. Uh, you once told me there are different ways, uh, but it's not that easy. Now, if I would buy a, a cryptocurrency and anything, I just need a wallet. Uh, is this the same with the with the tokenized carbon credits? I just need a wallet and I can. Yeah, with the tokenized carbon credit, you have this this the same as the Ronald one um, explainer. So the, yeah. this token has also the you have your wallet and you you buy your your credit. But in the off chain, no, the off chain are the traditional ones. There is not that way. So that is why this this facility to to do these transactions more transparent. Yeah, and for example, you could do that. For example, you don't have, for example, if you want to buy some credits of carbon low local in the future, for example, we just sign up a contract between two of us. You you wouldn't need a registry, but of course we we are obliged to remove them from our registry because of course our carbon credits are registered. For example, in this case, 
this plant grazing in Colombia, it's under it's part, uh, registered under Vera. Now waiting for for validation. So, but it, but it would be like that. For example, it would be like between carbon alkyl and eukyl, and no one would know how much did you pay to us if you are the final if you are the final user. Not there's this traceability, but we could, it could do that. Like, but it's, but it's more 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 kind of more yeah old old school than that. Really, just clicking and getting a smart contract. We would give you a certificate for to say where, yeah. So you, that is the credit and that is the registry. Well, one question on this. Uh, so uh, if, for example, uh, the tokenized um, carbon credited one ton uh, greenhouse emission, uh, I, I would want to sell it to some polluter here in Germany. Could they use this token uh, to compensate their pollution? Yeah, if there is no, I mean, they also here, you need to, to have a climate stra reduction strategy. But if the company allows, yeah, of course, because it is gonna put in the report. There is no difference. The point is there is no difference between a tokenized carbon credit and a carbon credit of chain. There is no difference at all. And there is what they're trying to, to, to unite, to not to standardize the, these registries to say, okay, how to say, but it's actually the same. So they just wanted to make sure that nobody is going to, to track it, no, to sell it again, but um, doing this tokenization. But that is the same, that the idea is the same, tokenized credit and not tokenized credit. Yeah. yeah. You mentioned uh, the voluntary carbon market. So it's different to the regular market, right? So uh, what, what, how can we dis differentiate it? And uh, is that uh, less valuable than the other one? The, 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 the compliance, the you mean, for example, the European trade system, you're talking like yeah. that. Exactly, it's confusing because people say like, oh, the, the carbon price in Europe already reached a hundred euros per ton of CO two, and like, and we see voluntary carbon prices are they are like two euros, because they are based on a cap and trade. No certain industry, for example, uh, yeah, the steel industry, uh, the coal uh, industry, they are obliged. No, there's a cement industry. These heavy industries are obliged or like uh, it's mandatory that they report their emissions and the, the government, what I did, for example, the European, all the industry that they are kind of the highly pollutants, they already contabilized the emissions and uh, uh, according to the climate strategy, net zero until 2050 Europe. So they say, okay, until here, there's a cap of emissions. No, here is a cap of emissions of the of you all a uh, polluted industry, so to say, no, I'm, I'm just like not using the technical issues. And then you say, either you are below that or you will have to buy. No, you have to buy, but you just can't only trade these emissions between all of you, no? between this closed market, no? like the steel could only trade with the coal, uh, coal mining, etc. So industry. So that's why the, the, the demand is higher because now the cap is decreasing, decreasing each year 4%, 4 if I'm not wrong. So decreasing there, there's a lot of less credits or less emission, no, that's a reduction, allowances, allowances, they're not called carbon credit, but allowances. There's less allowances I, and still higher pollutants because they are not um, decarbonizing as, as quickly as the, the cap of the emissions that they have to meet is, is going. So this is the regulated market and that's why the prices now uh, are getting exploded or like really skyrocketing that would, would be great like the voluntary carbon market had such uh, such prices or could reach soon those those prices because that could be like really a more finance now for example this this process is really long two years and you're buying the carbon credits for two euros so like how many people are you paying for for that you know and the effort and all the time so that's kind of unfair all this high standard quality and the price of the market is really low, no? So that's why, as well, people like don't prefer not not to support this climate project through this carbon finance. Yeah, this is a big. Topic it's a huge then. topic, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but let's oh. find in the uh, easier way. Nice. Uh, maybe, maybe one question more. Um, uh, if if I, I would have some farmers in um, in Argentina and they would like to plug into this carbon farming, uh, would that be um, ready made? So uh, if, if we can see, okay, it's, uh, these animals are grazing on this area, pot uh, land, uh, and uh, I, I could could I offer them immediately um, 
a carbon credit um, um, for for the um, selling. Is that already working? Everything so is everything set up for rotation and grazing? Um, there is already a, a, a carbon project like we are carbon local like us. Uh, doing the same with the um, farmers and uh, ranchers in Argentina, so we can connect you because they're also doing this group, group certification. So they take a small farmers and bring together into a one carbon certification. So you, you could have a look at, at them because um, they could join this project and they are they are doing the same as us, um, just doing all the certification, measuring the carbon gained, et cetera, and doing all the paperwork the measuring and your farmers could obtain. So you could do a, just like a negotiation with the project. Okay, we are gonna support them if we have a commission, et cetera. So, but there is already a carbon project running where your farmers could join. Okay, can you provide me some uh, data sure. and um, fit on this? That would be good. Um, I connected you uh, via LinkedIn, so maybe we can exchange them. Sure, yeah. Um. Maybe I just point out myself. <laughs> so I have uh, several uh, items on my mind. Uh, one, first, uh, you already answered the price finding. So how the price is determined. Um, because when you talk about tokenization that uh, and you create a marketplace and you have several marketplaces there um, in, in the Web3 space, um, how you can at the end find or match uh, buyers and sellers if the, the price finding is not um, stable. Um, uh, and then I have several other ideas. Um, the, the leverage for, for the world or for, for, uh, for this would be actually that, um, your, your knowledge, uh, applied, educated to other project in consultancy companies, right? So if, if we have like 10,000 of, uh, Carbono loca Local across the world, uh, where people are there educating farmers uh, uh, people who have these projects and need funding um, are on board quickly because I think the process you cannot optimize um, that quickly uh, so there mm -hmm. are standards you have uh, you have to deal with uh, non uh, government with government with the regulators um, and all of them have their own system their own IT infrastructure um, so if, if you have all this local um, consultancy companies like your ones um, with the local knowledge, I think that would be um, awesome because, I mean, this would be sp speed up the uh, the market uh, quicker in my uh, observation. Um, because we we currently uh, at our company, we do um, researching about this for real world assets. And um, you have, you're facing the similar, uh, let's say, issues because you're working with you have the so-called oracle problem. So if you, you and Pagans uh, outside the reality, you want to put something on chain or on digitize that, you need to trust people. Um, and you can fake data uh, uh, very easy, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, that that would be uh, one one thing how, we, how this can be um, changed. Um, so incentivization, I think it's a keyword next. So, even you have a token, uh, so how can you incentivize uh, farmers to participate and uh, incentivize um, uh, people, the community itself, uh, in order to, for example, validate really, like say there is a, there's a cow on 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 the field, um, not only with the remote sensing but uh, local people. So you build um, solutions around that. Um, and then aggregation. Um, we we are also now researching for ag an aggregator to to real world assets, uh, because we have this fractionalized markets. So you have a lot of um, uh, marketplaces who do um, different uh, industries, and uh, I think that would be also uh, looks like that there needs to be an aggregator. Ronald also pointed out um, because for for. Um, price finding, you need this uh, transparency. Um, and uh, I'm not sure how the, the players, which you have in the screenshot with all the markets, uh, how open their platforms are so that you can, uh, someone can build on top an aggregator. Um, and then my last uh, thought, um, I just share here in the chat, there's Molecule DAO, um, Molecule, so they, they are building tools for 
uh, biotech and uh, uh, medical uh, medical uh, research. So they they provide funding and tools. So it looks to, to me that um, um, the carbon market or the players are attach attaching similar project uh, problems because you have researchers who need funding, right? They uh, had an idea for for a uh, medicine which can break uh, change the world. Let's say this, and they need funding uh, upfront to to research, uh, experiment, and they have the funding on the let's say uh, global scale. They have I don't two hundred millions currently, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And they uh, organize it on a uh, global scale as well. So they supporting different initi initiatives to do that. Um, this might be also inspiration uh, to research how they do that um, because they, they have also these projects. We need pre-funding in order to start kicking off um, work. Thank you, Noah. Great, man. Thank <laughs> you. And um, no, yeah, just like, I just wanted to share like this uh, quick... Uh... Could, could you see my screen regarding the price? Yeah, like the different standards, the different, different registries. And for example, each project is different now, like depending on the community, for example, here in the gold standards, now this is really new that you could see around the price per ton. I don't know if it's suggested or I don't know if they, if they could really trade. Trade? No, they can't. No, that is the price. That is the price. That, that's the price, for example, that they are offering. For example, here you see like 12, a 12 and another, 18, 18, 15. So it's really elf, no, 15. But here they are managing kind of same prices, 25. So it as well, like it's not only the market, but how you uh, like storytelling because they, there's different communities with different needs, no? Even for example, a community, they are planting both, I don't know, 100 tiers. So they have the, the several number of animals, but the, the needs, no, or the social needs of the community, how was the gathering process? It's different, and that's how the price was making different the efforts to measure that. So that's why it's on the complex, and the, there are several projects, but each project is different. How could you judge the efforts of one community? You no, know, it's different. Like for example, a project developed by Carbono Local that we are really kind of small but growing uh, startup still. Until the other huge project developers that they have huge already financed, and they can they are developing I don't know like twenty projects per year. Not this kind of Social issues are still, no, that's why sometimes this over the counter one to one financing or like people that know about the topic, no, for example, we know like Stefan, no, that he knows about plant grazing. So we could already talk about our project and the benefits. But like, for example, another investors that they don't have idea about like the grazing or like about that. they think, of course, mm -hmm. like with the most of the uh, rancheries are like so they're really bad, really bad for the planet that they cannot be part of this a holistic circle circle of, of recovering the soil, we will have to spend like five months convincing an investor to, to improve in the, that project. So that's why it's difficulty of like, let's focus on people that already know the topic that they could find us really, if, even if they are not really big investors, but they are interested in the, in the topic could, that could finance us. So this is this huge, these uh, different topics, different projects, different project developers. So that's why, like the prices are, they they are some market indicators, but it's still still a, a lot of differences. So they they're pricing in the impact as well. So not only because one ton of carbon is one ton, so there's there's no exactly. <laughs> there's no difference in value. So uh, they also let's say incorporate the price, the operational cost of a building uh, solution or the project, and then say mm -hmm. okay the uh, yeah, based on that, they, they define the price. Okay. Good. Having a look at the time. <laughs> I don't know if you wanted to. Thank to you very much. But, um, thank, thank you so much, much for, for your, your attention. Time. And um, yeah, looking forward to keeping in touch.